Welcome to the Addicted Mind Plus, the podcast where recovery, mental health, and wellness take the front seat. I'm Dwayne Osterland, and joining me is my co-host, Eric Osterland, known for his insightful work on the Stuck Brain podcast. In each episode, we'll dive into actionable small steps to help those in recovery journey further along the path to wellness. Our conversations are designed to be concise, typically around 15 minutes, though we may occasionally delve deeper when the topic demands it. Our goal, to provide you with practical advice grounded in real experiences and expert insights to empower your recovery journey. So whether you're on a break, on a walk, or just taking a moment for yourself, join us as we explore the many facets of recovery and mental health one small step at a time. This is The Addicted Mind Plus, where your journey to wellness gets an extra boost. So let's get started. Real quick, before we start this episode, I wanted to mention that there are two other episodes that would help you get a lot more out of this episode, and that is episode nine on radical acceptance and episode six on cognitive distortions. It will help you get more out of this episode. So if you haven't listened to those, I would definitely encourage you to go back and check those out as well. It will help you with this current episode. All right, let's start this episode. Welcome to today's episode where we are going to dive deep into a concept that can transform your approach to life's challenges. Today, we're discussing the only four choices you really have in any problematic situation. And this insight isn't just about facing adversity. It's really about understanding the power you hold within to navigate through life's complexities. So I have a question to ask, how often have you found yourself at a crossroads, feeling utterly stuck? You feel a paralysis, and that's not uncommon. Many of us overthink the situation. We drown in all the possibilities. We become more distressed with each passing moment as you're trying to figure this out. You just get more and more overwhelmed, and you have a quest to find the flawless solution that only adds more to your turmoil and leaves you feeling anxious and unsettled. But how do you find the right answer? How do you know what the right thing to do is? And that comes back to our topic today, that there really are only four choices you can make. Yeah, it is hard to find the right answer. But it's important to realize, even if you're confident in your decision-making skills, that adopting a strategic approach to problem solving can significantly enhance the qualities of your choices. And the reason why this is so important is because even research shows that if we have multiple decision topics, we tend not to make a decision. So it's important to know how to narrow down your choices strategically and what the actual choices you have are. And there's only four of them, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, we get stuck with decision paralysis. And the thing is, is that life's going to show up with challenges. They're inevitable. So we're going to have to face these choices. We're going to have to make decisions. And the real question is not whether you're, you're, you're going to face them. We know that you're going to face them, but how you're going to respond to them when they arise. And without a strategy, it's easy to become overwhelmed, unsure of whether to act or remain passive. So this work is based on Marshall Linehan's work, Dialectical Behavior Therapy, and it offers a powerful framework for tackling problems. And Linehan outlined four basic strategies for any problematic situation. And those four things are solving the problem. That's the first one. We're going to talk about that. Changing your perception. That's the second option you have. We're going to talk about what that's about. Accept the situation. And we're going to look at that choice. And then your fourth situation is stay miserable. And that is a choice. And these choices can significantly ease the burden of decision making because you can put your choice in each one of those categories and you can decide where am I going to go? What am I going to do here? And move from there. Yeah, I love that. So when you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling, because sometimes we feel that there's just so many options and we don't know where to start. Now we know where to start. You get to boil it down and say, I have four choices to make. I'm going to go through each one of these and see which one is the best one. Right now you can make a decision because it's, it's chunkable. It's in smaller pieces that you can now consume and do, which is so powerful when we feel overwhelmed. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Being able to look at our four choices or our four choice categories helps us to define what we're going to do and helps us create actionable direction. 
So let's jump in and talk about each of our four choices. The first one is solve the problem. Is this something that we can take action on? So we really need to define the problem clearly. We have to sit with ourselves honestly and analyze the problem and get all the information to be able to see if we can take action. What I love about this step is that if you start with this one, you're going to analyze it and you might find out through analyzing it that you can't solve it. Yes. So that might actually be a choice. You you can... When you start with this one, you get to the point where you're like, I can't solve this, then you might have to move on to the other three choices. Yeah, we can look at the problem and really see, is is this, can I take action on that? And if we can take action, then we start to strategize what are the possible solutions? What can we do? What actions can we take? We troubleshoot that solution. We look at it. This is where I like to put pen to paper and write it down. And then we implement the solution that we've come up with for this problem. And also in that moment, that might mean that we have to evaluate it, adjust to it, change it, or realize that maybe we can't change this problem and we can move on to the next one. Yeah, which is so helpful. Once you realize you can't solve the problem, that actually gives you more power because then you're like, okay, now I can make these other three choices and I can move through the event or whatever you're going through. So it's a very important step. Yeah, and so our next choice, if we can't solve the problem and we can't take action on the problem, we discovered that, our next choice is to change our perception or a shift in perspective of the problem. And this is something we talk about in uh, another episode on cognitive distortions. We'll link that in the show notes as well about how we can change our thinking. We can reframe the problem as an opportunity. Absolutely. This one takes a little bit of practice, but with some help, you can definitely reframe the situation that you're going through and make it more accurate when you reframe it. And that's that's the key right there. Yeah, and an example might be something that comes up that we can't change. Like sometimes in an addiction, you may have cravings You may have something, and you can look at that as an opportunity. You might not be able to change that experience right in the moment, but you could then change your perception of that experience instead of going, oh, I'm a failure because X, Y, and Z, or I'm experiencing this, or I'm experiencing that. You can look at it as an opportunity for growth. So that's changing our perspective. That's changing how we look at it. And that also can change how we feel about it. Yeah. So if the cravings are getting less and you focus on, you know what, my cravings are getting less instead of just they're there, you know that you're trending in the right direction, which is a more productive way to look at it. Right. Like I'll give another example. If you're having withdrawal symptoms from addiction, maybe you're pulling out of addiction, you're having withdrawal symptoms, you could go, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Uh, I shouldn't even be here. This is awful. Or you could say, you know what? This is a sign my body is getting better. I'm reclaiming my independence from my addiction. And right there, that's a choice you can make that is reframing your perspective and it can be empowering. And you can consciously do that when you look through your choices. I'm going to work to change my perspective and get all the tools that allow you to do that. Like we talked about in that episode on cognitive distortions. We can look at all of our cognitive distortions and then shift them. That is a choice we can make. Yeah, so let's move on to choice three. What's the third one? This is a little bit harder, but it's about acceptance and embracing reality as it is. And this means tolerating the problem and tolerating our response to the problem that we're facing. Sometimes in life, Some things come up that we can't solve and we don't want to change our perspective about it. And so we need to accept it as it is. What comes to me most when I think about this kind of situation is, especially with addiction, we can face a lot of loss and we need to sit with that loss. We need to accept that that's the reality of the choices that we've made in our life and sometimes not our choices either. I mean, things come up that aren't in our control, Yeah. but we need to be able to stay there with it 
And we need the response to it. Sometimes our grief and loss can be something that's incredibly valuable for us because it can inform our life going forward. It can tell us what is meaningful to us. And so we need it. We don't want yeah. to change it. We want to lower the suffering from it. And that's where acceptance comes in. And we allow it to be as it is. And we find ways to tolerate our experience around it and and shift that over time. Yeah. And I just want to be clear, loss can be multiple things. It could be loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of a relationship, uh, loss of a career. So loss can come in many forms. Yeah, absolutely. But sometimes that's just what we need to do. There's situations where we just have to accept it and it is what it is. And that can be really hard, but we can do that consciously. And this goes into another episode that we did early too on radical acceptance, just being there, mm -hmm. letting the situation be what it is and choosing that as a choice. Absolutely. The last one is my favorite. Let's talk about that one. Yeah. The last choice is stay miserable. It's the choice of inaction. Now, and this could be a good choice at times. Sometimes we do need to be miserable. But I think what's important here is to realize we are making that choice to stay there. We are making a choice to stay in the status quo. And so just by having that frame, it empowers us. It puts the power back in our hands that says, I'm choosing to be here. And at first glance, this option might feel defeatist and negative, but not all the time. You know, sometimes we need to just be miserable for a little while as we find our way through it. And then maybe we can go back to one of the other choices that we have. But staying miserable is important to recognize and acknowledge that this is this is part of it. Yeah. So this could be your first choice right after, you know, a loss of a loved one, grieve. I'm going to stay miserable for a little while until you decide to or until you have the resources to make another choice. Yeah. And, you know, we have to understand the consequences of an action. So if I'm going to choose this choice, I need to look at what are the consequences of not taking action and then practicing some self-compassion as you move through that as well. So to conclude, we have four choices to make. So those days when you feel like you are just overwhelmed and you have so many options, you can boil it down to four main choices. Yeah. And those four choices are solve the problem, change your perspective on the problem, accept the problem, or continue to stay miserable. Whatever choice you want to make, it's yours. This is the empowerment of being able to frame your life through the lens of these four choices. It's incredibly powerful because it puts you in the driver's seat and helps you reduce the suffering in your life. And the overwhelm. It helps us with the overwhelm that sometimes life has. Like I said earlier, sometimes we just have, we feel we have so many choices. And if you can just bring those down to four, it makes it manageable. So this is why this is so strong. And I think that once you look at all this, you realize you always have that choice to do something. It's empowering to know that. So what we've done is we've created a little cheat sheet that you can go to the show notes and download that has these four choices that you can read over them again. And when you're facing a problem in your life, you can look at that sheet and you can say, what choice am I going to make today? And if I choose that choice, what are the steps I can take to move into that choice and do it successfully for my life? I am so excited people are gonna download this sheet it definitely will help empower you and give you the roadmap to where you want to go and solve your problems. So check that out in the show notes. Also, once again, I want to thank everybody who has left a review for the podcast. That really does mean a lot to us. That really does help people find the podcast and we just really appreciate it. And also, we want to hear from you. We want to know what your questions are what things that you want us to tackle so we can bring it to you. You can go to the addictedmind.com. Right on the side of the website is a little widget where you can leave us a voicemail. So check it out. We really want to hear from you. 
Yeah, your feedback is very important to us. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you on the next episode. See you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning into the Addicted Mind Plus. We hope today's episode has brought you valuable insights and a small step to support your journey in recovery, mental health, and wellness. For more information about this episode and additional resources, please visit our website at theaddictedmind.com forward slash plus. And if there's a topic you're eager to hear about or a question you'd like us to explore, we'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us at theaddictedmind.com and let us know your thoughts. Your journey is important and we're here to support you every step of the way. Until next time, take care and keep stepping forward on your path to wellness.